And I have an epic video for you today. Grab some popcorn, sit back, relax, and let me briefly pay some bills. This video is sponsored by Squarespace. From websites and online stores to marketing tools and analytics, Squarespace is the all-in-one platform to build a beautiful online presence and run your business. About a year ago, I was sent a commission that I haven't yet finished. I could make endless excuses for why it's not done, such as I don't want to deal with it because it's fine cast. But at the end of the day, it's either my fault for over committing or my fault for not prioritizing it. So let's make good on my year old promise and paint Orion, king in the woods. Orion, as his title alludes to, is a wood elf. In fact, he's the head honcho in Athaloran, or rather, what was Athaloran. Every season, the Wild Riders find someone with suitable characteristics to take up the mantle of King in the Woods. Orion is never physically the same person. Every winter, he dies, and every spring, he is reborn, inheriting the memories of the previous kings. It's actually a pretty awesome concept. It's so awesome that it makes me kind of sad that the model itself is a little bit lackluster. The width of his crown is pretty much the same height as Orion himself, but the model itself is well over a decade old. So I can't be too harsh. And it's about a million times better than whatever the heck this is. No, God, please, no, no! The commissioner requested that Orion and his hounds be arranged on a display base as opposed to a gaming base and even sent along a picture of what the final piece looked like in his head. This is great for commissions. The more information I can collect up front, the better. It better ensures that my client is happy with the end product. Also, before we go any further, it's worth mentioning that I don't accept commissions anymore for obvious reasons. Seven years, seven years. After I spent too long cleaning up the model, I decided to get the display base done first. I'm using a fancy plinth from Dark Messiah, a UK brand, to build on. To create the landforms on the base that would allow Orion to be above the dogs, I used some chunky, thick bark and began to work on the layout of the miniatures, referring to the picture I was sent. Once I figured that out, I tossed the bark into a toaster oven on a low setting to dry it out, but also to kill off any remaining bacteria. I scuffed the top of the base with some 120 grit sandpaper to improve adhesion, taped the sides to protect them from paints, and began super gluing down chunks of bark. To strengthen the wood, which is otherwise fairly fragile, I soaked it in superglue thin, which gets absorbed immediately. This will stabilize the bark and better prevent chips in the future. I'm not sure I'd recommend this method, or at least if you're going to do it, wear some kind of mask. It smells pretty intense. I then glued down some dry dirt with PVA glue in various areas around the base and sealed it in with more superglue thin. It was now time to start planning out the locations of the miniatures. The reason I'm doing the base before painting the miniature is because I'm going to manhandle them quite a bit, trying to figure out where they should end up. So it's good to do that now before I spend a long time painting them, only to wipe off the paint with my greasy nerd hands. With my base started and all my miniatures and various sub-assemblies pinned and on pieces of cork, it was time for one last prep step. As if fine cast wasn't garbage enough, a lot of pieces have rather large gaps when assembled together. So I had to fill those gaps and hide them with some sculpted detail like fur on the legs of the dog. Lastly, I primed the model black with my airbrush and applied a light gray zenithal highlight from the top. This method of undercoating allows me to see where my highlights and shadows should be, which is especially helpful when painting items in subassemblies. It can be easy to forget the orientation of each piece. Once that was done, it was finally time to start painting the miniature. The commissioner for this piece wanted me to paint it like the box art. That means gray and white hounds and lots of greens on Orion. I began with the skin tone on Orion. I like to tackle what seems like the biggest part of the miniature first to get it out of the way. Starting with a murky, desaturated green, I began base coating while also wet blending in an even muddier green that I got by mixing magenta into my initial green color. To me, the box art seems as though the shadows go to magenta, which is a choice that makes sense from an artistic perspective. Green and red are on opposite sides of the color wheel, which makes for a choice in hue that's very contrasted. If you need help with some artsy vocabulary, I made a video detailing a lot of common terms in the art world and in the major painting world that you can find linked in the description below. I like to start this way with a brush pretty often. Nothing too bright or too dark, just something to grease the wet blending wheels. After that, I started to work with brighter and more saturated greens, applying them in layers with pretty thin paint, just taking my time and working up the color. 
I'm using the scale of 75 range, and if you rush this stage, you often get highlights that look quite chalky. Take your time, apply thin layers, and reach full opacity in the parts you want to. At various stages during this skin blending, I'll come in with a recessed shading color, in this case that muddy brown tone that I used earlier to neatly section off each detail. This gives me a better idea of where I'm at in the blending stage. Oftentimes, when your blends are trampling over detail, they can look really bad. But if you clean them up with a recessed shade, they can look a whole lot better for not much extra work. At this stage in the skin, I was beginning to run into a problem that I am all too familiar with. The box art for Orion's skin reads as pale green flesh, whereas mine reads as kind of lime green. I can continue highlighting, but I may have started off too dark to reach the correct end destination. To fix this, I'll begin highlighting with a brighter, paler tone in the same way I was previously with thin, translucent layers. The only difference, though, is that this time I'll probably cover up more of the previous layer than I normally would. This took a long time because the color I'm using is fairly bright, which means it struggles to get opacity. While I struggle, let's talk about today's sponsor, and that's Squarespace. I don't have a personal gallery for my miniature painting art, so when Squarespace reached out to sponsor a video, I took it as an opportunity to use their platform to build a dedicated gallery for myself. A gallery like this is useful for a number of reasons. For people who don't know what miniature painting is, which is like all of my family, this shows them in a succinct way. Importing images and dealing with alignment is made easy and all while creating a website that just looks awesome. It's important that your gallery shows your work while also being functional and beautiful itself. If I need to see a bigger resolution of this mini so I can see the creamy blends, it's as simple as double clicking. If you want to set up a nice miniature art gallery for yourself, head to squarespace.com slash miniac to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. All right, back to the painting. I worked my way all the way up to a pastel bright yellow color and that's where I ended Orion's skin tone. To do the eyes, I held my breath for three minutes straight and offered a blood sacrifice to the god of steady hands. After all that tedious blending work, it's time to freehand on top of it and mess it all up. The box art for Orion has tendril-like freehanded vines swirling around his rib cage and thighs, so I gave it a shot. It seems like the freehand is supposed to naturally flow from the sculpted vines, which is a choice I wouldn't have made had I painted the box art. It's very hard to blend painted detail with sculpted detail seamlessly, if not impossible. Despite that, I still tried. The method here is to use a thin brush with a sharp tip and paint that is sufficiently thin such that it flows off your brush without much resistance, but not so thin that you have to redo lines too many times. It's worth mentioning that I had to go over a few spots a couple times. Just like with bright colors over dark colors, dark colors over bright colors struggle with opacity and need multiple layers. The next detail I tackled were the intense amount of leaves all over Orion. He's a wood elf, so obviously he needs to be covered in flora and fauna. Nature is varied, but painting all these leaves in somewhat different green tones is a fast track to insanity, so I tackled it this way. Basically, on the lower parts of Orion, the leaves were brown and dead. The higher up they got, the more green they got, and also the brighter the leaves got. I started off just like I did with the skin, with a sloppy wet blend of three colors. It's actually a lot easier to wet blend on a surface with texture like this, so if you're ever in need of practicing, grab something that has some texture and enough space to fling your brush around like a base with some dirt on it, for example, and go to town. I applied this same transition two times to get more opacity the second time around, and then slapped on a green shade to get some definition on all my leaves. After that had dried, I began applying highlights to the leaves. I probably gave some love to 85% of the leaves on Orion, whether it was one highlight or multiple. If the detail was higher up on the model, I gave it more love in the form of more highlights with about a thousand different shades of green. At this point, there were many mixtures of green on my palette, and I was letting my artistic choice run wild at the expense of a video that makes sense. Next up, I moved on to the bone crown, which is probably the biggest victim of fine cast texture on the model. So I took my time to get a nice, smooth blend. Bone can go in all kinds of directions, but for the box art, it was brown at the base and off-white yellow at the tip of the horns. So I started with a base coat of light brown and got to wet blending. 
I started on something in the middle of my plan gradation. For instance, if this was my planned level of contrast in the end, I started with these two tones and then worked either end of the spectrum, increasing the contrast slowly until it was just right. Just like on other parts of this miniature. The color white especially needs a lot of layers to reach a nice, bright color, more so than any other color. <laughs> White's not a color. <laughs> Stop. Stop it. Next up, I worked on the staff, which started with a simple base coat of a yellowy brown, which was then doused in a brown wash, kind of toning down the yellowiness. I then followed this up with a series of highlights, mixing in more and more off-white yellow into my brown in increasing quantities. Mixing my highlights in this way is easier than having to get out a whole new pot of paint for one highlight color of a single detail on this model. I applied thin layers of highlights, slowly building up opacity like on many other parts of this model. Now onto the gems. There are a few gems littered throughout this miniature. Gems are fun because it doesn't take a lot of thinking or skill to have an effect that looks great, unlike something like non-metallic metal or OSL. I've been painting gems in the same way for over a decade, and I've always been reasonably happy with the result. Saying that out loud makes me feel like I should be a gem painting innovator, which is definitely a legacy I want to be known for. Anyways, we start with a reasonably dark base coat, in this case, dark green. I follow that up with a crescent-like highlight toward the bottom right of the gem, covering approximately one-third of the original base coat in a grass green color. Then, with a brighter, almost neon green, I do a similar shaped highlight, covering about one-tenth of the gem. These are approximate values. There's some blending that can be done in between the layers, depending on how large the gem is. The one I'm demonstrating on is the largest gem on the model, whereas other smaller ones around the miniature need less futzing with. Lastly, I added a white dot in the bottom right in the top left of the gem and hit it with a gloss varnish, which deepens the color, but also gives me some cheat-like free highlights because like a real gem, this one is also actually reflective. For the gold elements on the model, I started with a brown undercoat and then applied a layer of gold where I could. What I mean by that is that a lot of the metal details don't have a ton of surface area. They're entirely made up of thick, fatty edges. Fatty edges. This is also true of a lot of the leaves on the mini. For details such as these, starting with a base coat of the color you intend to be your shadow color and then doing a layer of the final color is a lot faster than the standard base coat wash layer. And it looks better because it's more defined and it requires the same level of painting control. Wake up, sheeple. You don't need to wash everything. Lastly, I hit the gold elements with a highlight of something in between silver and gold. I was applying this very sparingly, trying to not cover up the previous layer entirely. There wasn't a whole lot of room to work. There are a lot of other minor details on this model that I'll skip in the interest of time, but also in the interest of showing different techniques. It was time to finally put the model together with some gentle twisting of the temporary pins and some cleanup of the connecting areas with an X-Acto knife, I glued together the various parts of Orion. That was a major milestone in this commission, the main character finally done. Now I can work on the dogs, which I didn't spend so much time on. If you remember back to the beginning, I zenithly undercoated Orion, and the same is true for the dogs. The first step I did was another highlight of white ink to bring this closer to white. I did a few passes of this drying with the hair dryer in between so I can get a good idea for how bright it actually was. After that, I took some black ink and targeted the legs and the forehead of the dogs using the box art as my guide. I then hit it with a gloss varnish and then a black wash, which I kind of regret. I think a gray wash would have been more appropriate for the white portions. I thought with the really sharp detail of the fur and the glossy varnish, the wash wouldn't have stained the white as much as it did. Oh well, lesson learned. I then dry brushed the lower portions with gray and the upper portions with white, bringing back some brightness. Lastly, I painted the snout of the dogs white, keeping some of the gray peeking through in the recesses to give some definition, and the eyes green as per the box art. Sidebar, does anyone think it's mildly ironic that while beastmen are the biggest wood elf threats, Orion himself is kind of a beastman with his satyr-like anatomy? Weird. Anyways. Let's make a tree. I began with a common terrain making tactic using floral wire armature. I got a few lengths of this stuff and twisted the wires together, creating one big trunk. Then, splicing off smaller two to three wire groups, I began to make branches. 
each branch eventually ends in a single wire armature so that it can be nice and thin toward the end. Once I had the general shape right, I chopped off the excess and glued it into a cavity of a small branch. My idea here was to skip the sculpting of the tree branch and use something real. I also drilled some extra holes in the trunk and added additional branches. Next up, I covered all the branches in a thin veneer of milliput. I also filled in some of the holes on the trunk that I accidentally made. At various points, I wetted my finger with water to smooth everything out. This took a bit of time, but it was worth it to me. A typical alternative to this is to use multiple layers of liquid latex, but even after a few, I find you can still see the wound wire effect. So I'd rather save time and just do it in one pass with Milliput. With the wire mostly covered up, I glued the tree into the base with a metal pin. I also sculpted some exposed roots with some Milliput sausages that tapered at one end. Once the milliput was dry, I planned to reintroduce some bark texture with a wire brush. Milliput takes carving and sanding very nicely, but I was scared I was going to snap the branch in half because I was pushing too hard. It was very dry and brittle, so instead I settled for gluing on some dirt texture. A lot of this texture will be covered by naturey stuff in the future. I primed the base black, followed by a directional white undercoat to show off some of the texture, and then proceeded to douse this base in various transparent acrylic products like ink and contrast paints, etc. I began with a pretty generic brown for the portions of bark that were hit with the white ink, and then I took a green ink and applied it to more of the shadowy parts. This had an effect that I really liked. Back to the highlight portion, I applied some lime green ink to really drive home the nature vibes. I hit the tree with more of a sepia brown color to have some variety in the wood. Lastly, I applied a matte varnish all over the base to seal in the dainty inks, but also to kill some of the shine. I actually used AK Interactive's lauded matte varnish, but I had a really hard time shaking it all up and getting it nicely distributed. It was kind of gunked up at the bottom of the bottle. For the final strokes of paint on this piece, I dry brushed some light brown on the bark and dirt to bring out some more detail, and then it was on to my favorite part, applying a buttload of static grasses, tufts, leaves, etc. I have a lot of these products because I'm an addict. I'll link my favorite companies in the description below so you can check them out. There isn't a lot to say about this stage, I just apply a large variety of products all over the base. When using tufts, don't be afraid to tear them into really small, tiny tufts to get a nice variety of size. Or you could just own Gamer Grass's tiny tuft product and be cool like me. Look at how tiny these things are. I love it. Let's watch this base come to life. For the tree, I use this product that I have that's almost like tiny scale leaves bound up in a cotton-like thread. I put down some thick PVA glue and stuck down a wad of this stuff on each branch. When it dried, I applied a different color of the same product to get some nice variety. I also took some scissors to clean up the stray fibers on each tree bush. Tree bush is a funny word. After this stage, there were a ton of tiny little leaves on my desk, so I gathered them up and sprinkled them onto the tree bush things. Once I was done, I dropped some isopropyl alcohol followed up with scenic glue onto the tree bushes. Tree bush, tree bush, tree bush. The iso is there to help assist the capillary action of the scenic glue so that it runs into all the tiny little leaves. I have a recipe for scenic glue linked in the description if you're curious. Now finally, we can attach the models to the base and conclude this epic commission.
As a Wood Elf fan, I feel as though a rite of passage is painting Orion. It's like watching The Exorcist as a horror fan. You just gotta do it. Now I can gatekeep other Wood Elf fans and say garbage like this. Bro, you haven't painted Orion yet? How can you even call yourself a Wood Elf fan? Jokes aside, while the process of painting Orion wasn't incredibly enjoyable due to all the finicky details and weird fine cast texture in various areas, there's absolutely no denying the immense satisfaction I felt when putting the final piece together and removing the tape from the base. Oh yeah, not for the big daddy. No, 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 no. Oh yeah. Damn, that feels amazing. Thanks for sticking through the entire video all the way to the end. If you like the video and the channel and you want to support it, there are a number of ways that you can do it, namely a Patreon campaign with a bunch of fun rewards or buying hobby equipment that I recommend in the description below. They're all affiliate links, so whenever you buy using those links, I get kickback and no extra cost to you. You can also buy the miniature that I produced called The Duchess of Vampire along with a digital course with it. Subscribe or die! And most importantly, don't forget to pay my minutes!